Hey guys, Scuffless Guy here. Uh, we're bringing you a Katsu deck profile that went undefeated in Swiss at the Pro Quest Sushi Night. I'm joined here with uh, one of my good mates, Jack Witt. How you doing, Jack? What's up, bro? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me on. So, you're having a bit of success with Katsu down in Wellington. Yeah, bro, a little bit. Because you, uh, you happen to win another Pro Quest Season 1 with Katsu, right? Yeah, that was at the Cerberus Games one in town. And they coming in, smashing here, going undefeated, and unfortunately falling victim to the undefeated uh, curse. Where? Yeah. yeah. So uh, I know that you also went and played in the Pro Tour in New Jersey, and you were playing Katsu there, right? Yep. Was there much difference between the list that you played today and the list that you played over there? Uh, I think it was about... There's, I changed about nine cards, and I've also come in to each matchup with a slightly different game plan. Were the cards that you changed, were they influenced by Jersey, or was it just adapting and um, playing what you know, or playing for what you could expect at the local scene? Uh, the new cards that I put in, I put in because my mate told me to put them in, and I said that they were bad, and then I put them in, and they were not bad. Okay, um... Well, we'll get things started here. So I see that you've got the you've got the standard ninja lineup for the equipment: the two daggers, the breaking scales, tunic, the mask, and the snappies. But you also got another tech uh, chess piece here: the hardened cross strap. Yeah, bro. Uh, that one's for matchups where you're like you're really gunning it. So matchups like chain, uh, briar. It's like pretty much all three rune blades. You chucking on the hardened cross strap. Because uh, that's going to pay for a surging, a surging strike, so that you're not whiffing on your all red hands. Yeah, does it have anything to do if you're expecting the games to not last that long, where if you play Tunic, you're not going to be capitalising on that one resource every three turns, because the games just don't last that long? Yeah, exactly. And with um, going into those matchups, I'm wanting to race them. So with a 4-5 turn game, I'm only getting one resource off the Tunic, and it's just not giving me that value that you would over a prolonged game. Yeah, is there a certain uh, hand that you wait to see until you pop the cross strap, or is it kind of just if you... Uh, it's usually when I have a surging strike, and I just can't pay for it. So you don't wait or until you got the surging and the gust wave? Or do you... uh, usually you're waiting for the gust wave, because... Um, yeah, I've had a game against Chain where I just we were both really low. I was able to block two cards, crack the cross trap, and then come in with the surging whelming for free. Yeah, must which be is just nice. a really nice zero cost turn to apply some pressure late game. And you've also got the null rune gloves and the null rune robe. Yep. So what so makes? The... Oh, sorry. So the matchup set. I would be playing the rune robe into is all the rune blades because all the rune blades are just like pretty much hard aggro decks now and that don't block that well so breaking scales puts them into a weird position where they have to over block and commit too many cards or commit not enough cards and i get the value of get the one damage through on breaking scales yeah and if you're playing Sakano, are you just playing both the pieces or you're trying to race or foul them um, I played against the Kano round one. Uh, I played Barrier two, which I think I think is good enough for Kano. They can still kill you from I think twenty twenty eight, but um, Mask and Snapdragons are just like two very important pieces of equipment that you can apply a lot of pressure with. Yeah, definitely. Mask and Snapdragon, you just keep the pressure up, especially if you pop the Snapdragon on a snatch or something. But um, we'll get into the main deck here. Uh, are you playing a couple combo lines here? I think three different combo lines, if you want to start yep, us off there. Yeah, uh, we'll start off with the new one from Everfest, the 100 wins line. Yeah. So this line is just, it's not really a line. It's just like more cards that have added consistency to the to Katsu. It's just the red ones are zero cost, three attack that has combo, so you can tutor it off Katsu, and you can play it with, with, you can play a card with Go Again from Katsu's ability without having to actually combo. And it's also nice that the 100 wins combo with themselves, 
So however many you've played this chain, like it gets plus X, where X is the amount you've played this combat chain. And then you've got the new zero cost combo card, blue. Uh, the Winds of Eternity, which is base power two, but combo, when it has combo, it comes in for four. And if it hits, you get all your hundred wins back. So you can have a really explosive turn with like maybe 300 wins coming in for three, four, five, and then the Winds of Eternity to end the chain off. Yeah, it's definitely a big upgrade for um, the old Katsu players would usually have to just search out like a fluster fist when we didn't have anything going on. Uh, so I see you're playing three red 100 wins, two yellow 100 wins, and the full three wins of eternity. You've uh, chosen not to play any of the blue ones. Is there a reason yeah, for that? I do. Yeah, I do have a reason behind that. So the matchups where I'm bringing the 100 wins in is when I want to be aggressive. So, and we don't need more goals. So matchups like such as Starvo, Oldham, Prism, like those three in particular, they all have those uh, one block, one block piece of equipment where Prism's got the footsteps and the shields, so she can quite easily just block one. Same with Oldham and Starvo, they've got the crown and the rampart. This is an easy block one. So the hundred win, a blue hundred win, just really isn't achieving much because I want, I want these cards. With go again to be attacking, I, don't, I want to be pitching these dead cards that don't have go again for my cards that do have go again. Okay, so you're not playing the hundred wins line into every matchup. It's not part of the the main core then. Uh the red ones are. The, okay. It's just the yellow hundred wins that, that are in the sideboard. Oh, okay, nice. And um, so we'll move on to the next combo line then. Oh uh, yeah. The uh, we'll go we'll go leg tap now. Okay. So I see yeah, here you've got, the, you've got three red leg taps and one yellow leg tap. How was uh, the one yellow leg tap for you? Um, it, it felt really nice. It goes really well with Ancestral and obviously has a lot of chemistry with the the new cards that I put in for this list. But also, it's just a nice bait. It pulls a card, and if it doesn't pull a card, you get a cut to trigger off. Yeah, it also goes well with the Art of Wars yeah, that too. And then with the you knee thrust, base. you're playing two reds, one yellow, and the full three blues. Is that yeah. a ratio you're yeah. happy with, and you like it? Yeah. Uh, today I wasn't really finding myself like siding in that yellow hundred, the yellow rising knee. I'm not quite sure why that is, but um, those ratios I've messed around with for quite a while, and that's what I've like ended up with, and that's what I'm happy with. Okay. And then for the finishes of that line, you got one of each. You got the one hurricane and the one blackout kick. Yeah. So for a long time, I was on two hurricane, and I just that was just personal preference, completely personal preference. And I like the fact that hurricane pitched for two over the blackout that pitches for one. But like messing around with a uh, blackout kick. Uh, post net, I've just seen the power in that card, and I've just chucked it in the list, and I'm liking it a lot. Yeah, definitely. I remember when um, early days of um, Fab, a lot of people were kind of just sleeping on um, Hurricane technique, and we were just choosing to play the the blackout kick for the raw damage. And in a fast format where people don't care about blocking, do you think sometimes the raw damage is just better than uh, threatening to bring back the the hurricane technique. I mean, for example, if you're playing against the chain, they can just throw the husk in front of the hurricane technique, and it's not really accomplishing much, right? Yeah, but if I'm playing a, a hurricane technique, and there's not really any other on hits that would go into the stack, like such as mask, um, I'm happy to see a husk on that hurricane because then I pulled, I pulled your husk, which is quite an important piece in that matchup on a not very a, not in a very effective spot per se yeah so I'd, I'd be happy to see a hurricane a husk on a hurricane but also in like those no blocks races with such as chain i would prefer the hurricane of the blackout because you are presenting that on hit and putting pressure on for them to put cards on the board so they have less cards on the in their hand for their turn and are you playing both of those finishes for the leg tap line to give it and all that um, I would I would only bring in the the blackout kick when I'm playing the yellow rising rising knee thrust just so I can get more 
I can get off more consistently. Okay, yeah, nice. And you got one more uh, combo line there in that deck, right? Yeah, the infamous surging strike line. Yeah, this is like the it, the bread and butter of the Katsu decks. Yeah, bro. I've seen it come and go. I've seen a lot of people cut it. But it's just my favorite line. I don't. I might grow out of it. I might not. But it's just too good not to run, pretty much. You've got, like, your, your two for five, two for four surging strikes, which is just, like, good damage. But then you've got your Whelming Gust Wave, which is an on-hit that, like, needs to be addressed immediately. You don't want Katsu with more cards in his hand. And then you've got the, the powerful finisher. Oh, no, finisher. You've got the powerful Mugenshi release, which is going to search up your finisher and then shuffle all your combo pieces back into your deck so you can play it again later. Yeah, so we'll just go over the ratios here. You're playing... Free red, free yellow surging strikes, uh, free red, free blue whelmings, and two yellow gust waves, and then free and yep. free of the Mugensi Lord of Winds. Yeah. So you're so playing a, a while, what's that, a six on... to eight ratio, and yeah, not not a six and nine. <laughs> I was on I was on the six and nine for a bit, but that was kind of a bit of a troll. Just, just because of sixty nine. <laughs> yeah. But um, I did I did cut a yellow warming for the new cards that I was putting in. It was just one of those cards that were was underperforming, where I feel like yellow gust wave at three is just not necessary. Do you find did he find it a bit overkill having the the nine gust waves there? Yeah, pretty much. And are you playing the the full the full gust wave packages in every matchup? Yep. Uh, none of this combo line ever gets taken out. Okay, so this is just in every matchup, no matter what. Yep. And, uh, are there any situations where you kind of, uh, maybe if the surging hits or something hits and you're going to play surging, is there any scenario where you kind of want to get the yellow one over the red? Like if you're trying to, like, bait an empowerment or save the reds for later? Or do you kind of just have the yellows uh... in there if you just hard draw them? Yeah, that's that's pretty much what it is. You're increasing your chance of drawing the natural combo, um, and also you've, you're using you're pitching your yellows early, and then you're drawing them later, and you're getting that value from pitching pitching a yellow card, and then you're playing it playing it as your power card later. Okay, is that kind of when you've uh, tried to make your opponent use up some of those defense reacts? And then you can kind of just play the gust wave with the breaking scales up, maybe, where they can't just one card block it. Yeah, you're forcing them to overcommit. If you search up a yellow gust wave over a red, you're pretty much forcing them to overcommit, which is pretty funny for some mind games. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll just move on to the. Um... The staple, like, red attacks and support. Yeah, the, we'll call it the other stuff. I see you're running yeah, the, the, uh, like the the belittles, a couple of belittles in there. Ooh. Uh, yeah, bro. So what, what what's the ratio there? Was it three genus? Three red belittle. Yeah. Uh, two red mineralism and three blue mineralism. Okay. So how did you find the red mineralisms there? Uh, the red mineralisms were super nice because I've, I've pretty much maxed out on the surging line. You go, like, belittle, search up a red mineralism, play your surging. Oh, you play the red mineralism, play the surging, and then the whelming's going to hit for seven. Because the mineralism doesn't trigger on the surging because it doesn't fulfill the cost on the card. Yeah, and it's also just some more, uh, the, with the belittles, just more attacks that you just can throw and out with go also, again. Pardon? Sorry, I was just saying that um, a belittle just gives you some more go again attacks, and it just yeah, yeah, that too. All right, so we'll go I and... cut the three red flick flex for the belittles, and it's just added a lot more consistency. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that while we move on to just the other stuff here. That you're playing the free sinks and not electing to play um, any flick flex. Is there? What's your reasoning for that? Uh, actually, a bit of oversight on my part. The only the 
I had an argument for this, but then like talking to some people today, I realised that flick is just kind of better because the sync, the matchups that I was bringing syncs into was like it's only really Lexi, where against Lexi she's going for two or three attacks per turn, so that's making that flick flick more relevant. But my argument for sync is that you do want to be racing her as well because I'm only on the 3D react. You can't really play a mid-range plan. So the sync is going to fix your hand, which is really nice. Yeah, so you just kind of like prefer the utility of being able to fix a hand rather than trying to defend with multiple cards to max out on the value of a flick flick? Yeah, because I want to be pressuring Lexi so that she can't have those big turns. So Sync is going to allow me to get rid of those cards that don't work well with my current hand and hopefully draw into a better one. Yeah. And the rest of the deck's pretty self-explanatory. You've got the free Ancestrals, the free E-Strikes, uh, the free Snats, the free Razors. Two Art of War, you, you kind of... I know a lot of That's players a... kind of pivot between playing free, some play one, some play two. You, you like two? Yeah, two is just what I find best, what I've been the most comfortable on. And then we see that you've got the free Command and Conquers. Are those just for Prism, or you like playing them against other decks as well? Uh, so, I'd say that I have two of them in the main board. One of them come in for Lexi, so I play all three into Lexi. And then Prism is the weird one. So if I know that the Prism is on the Herald Aggro, or they're going to side into the Herald Aggro package for full cut to and try to race me, the CNCs are going to come in as poppers. But I tested the, the Aura Prism builds a lot. Like the Aura's builds that we still saw from like Jason Lyon and just, Justin Wong. Yeah. The CNCs are not very good in that matchup because you want to be ending your turn with a Kadachi at an Aura, where a CNC, they can just... They can either just double block or they can just take and play out the aura from Arsenal before the CNC triggers. Yeah, so it basically just turns into a brutal assault at that point. Yeah. And the the last card we have is uh, one of the new toys from Everfest, even bigger than that. Which, uh, it feels like it was designed specifically for Katsu. Yeah, for sure. Alright, so tell, uh, tell, me, tell me about this card. It's, it's, it's an instant. Uh, you play it. You play it as long as you as you have dealt damage, and you the red one is going to opt three. And I've elected to only play the reds for that opt three, so I can, I can dig further, find the cards that I need. Um, and then you're going to opt three, reveal the top card of your deck, and if it deals, if its base power is greater than the amount of damage you've dealt this turn, you get to draw it and you create a quicken which is add some really nice utility so you can like you can use that quicken up on a combo card that doesn't have go again you're giving that combo card go again then you can go search up a finisher or even you you find an e-strike off of the bigger than that and you can also set up what you want to draw off the e-strike if you want to go for plus two draw a card or whatever and it's just that quicken token isn't always coming in but when it does it comes in really big so with that, it helps being able to cheat out just playing a raw gust wave into them against you. Does it just help with like the consistency of the um the deck? We just don't draw the combos. Yeah. When you when you draw like those quad combo card hands, or like three combo cards and a bigger than that, you know it's fine because you can just like Karachi bigger than that get that quick and token. You can you get another card in your hand and then. You can use up that quicken token with one of those combos cards without go again. Then you can search up the combo finisher if it hits. Or you can go off with that card that you got off bigger than that. It's just a very it's a very powerful utility card. Yeah, because when I've been playing Katsu myself, I kinda like I go the, the Kadachi and as soon as they take the first Kadachi, you know, even bigger than that's turned on. So you can you can throw up the uh the second Kadachi and then before, you know, before damage, you can just uh, flash the even bigger than that before damage is dealt. Yeah, I'm only finding myself playing the bigger than that on the second Kirachi, only if I have Tuna Cup. 
because I've got the six surgings in deck, I can use that tunic to pay for the surging if I get one off of the bigger than that. Nice. Um, so, do you just want to go quickly over some of the matchups that you had today in the Swiss? Yeah. Uh, so, round one, I had my playtesting partner on Kana. He's been he's been like really trying to get Kano to work ever since like the two Kanos and Top Eight at the Pro Tour. That that really inspired him to like play play Kano and get him to work in the local scene. Could you uh, would you say it kind of set a a fire for him? <laughs> definitely, definitely set something ablaze. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um. And what did you play after that? Um, I had I played into an Ice League C, which is one of my favorite matchups. It can go either way. Next you can run away with the show, or Katsu will just do what Katsu does and pressure Lexi enough that she won't have her big turns. Which, like, that game, Lexi had control of the game for, like, the first three turns of the game. But then they came in with like some non-fused arrows, or like the the arrows from Ark with like those on it, like the sleep dart, the Ender's arrow, and that, which I just took. You just then, uh, kind of eat them. Yeah, you just cut you you after a few games with Lexi, you figure out which arrows aren't as effective, which ones you can eat, which ones you can't, and then you just kind of go off from there, steal the tempo back, and yeah. Okay, so... And then round... Oh, sorry? I was just going to say, so so you slaughtered Lexi, and then we move on to the next <laughs> opponent. Yeah, we we got a lonely prism, who I knew was on there. The, they had the hero aggro sideboard, because he was a local player. So all three of those conks came in. Uh, I saw two of them in, like, my first three or four hands. They just, like, popped some random war tune or whatever. Maybe a phantasmoclasm. But yeah, CN- all CNC really does in that matchup is pop pop those uh what 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 uh the heralds, but also they they do want to pre- they do want to use that arsenal a bit more than the aura builds would. So hard casting uh, CNC is also fine into them. Do you ever find yourself wanting to hold on to it for erudition, or are you just throwing it at? a herald that you find the most threatening at the time when you have the CNC in hand? I just chuck it at the most threatening herald at the time. I never want to be, like, holding cards in hand. And, like, it's funny you bring up erudition because that's the one that I, like, care about the least. I, oh, I wow. eat those all day. <laughs> you don't care about giving them a pot of greed? Yeah, nah. Okay. I'm not giving you my mask, bro. J- just built differently, I see. Yeah, bro. Okay. And then what What was after Prism? Uh, another Prism. Oh, man. Back to back. But I knew... I, yeah, I knew this guy was on the the more aura-based builds. But um, it, the first three turns, of what, what, like the normal first three turns are, where you're just like, keeping keeping the auras under control. Um, he resolved like two Prismatic Shields in two turns, which was pretty good. Um... But then I just drew like the natural order win combo. Oh no, it was the it was the minimalisms that showed up that in that game actually. Oof, I had, work. Yeah, bro. I played a red minimalism. Uh, then a red surging strike. The surging strike hits for five. Uh, he blocked with like a card and equipment. He couldn't block the whelming, so he he was forced to partially block the whelming. And then I just search up the Mugen and kill him with the Lord of Wind. Okay, yep, nice. Must be nice. Yeah. So you're, you're heading into round five and you haven't seen a single Starvo. You must be pretty stoked. Uh, yeah. Uh, I was four at that point. There was four other fouros. There was a Lexi, a Prism, I think, a Starvo, and a Briar, which are like the only matchup that... I don't. I really don't mind any of those matchups, honestly. But the one matchup I don't want to see, the one I prefer not to play, is the Starvo. And of course, they get paired into the Starvo. Is that into round uh, five or? Yeah, round five we get paired into the Starvo. Okay, and how'd that game go? Um, 
the game lasted like five turns. Three of those he revealed for Salvo. The other two, it was like ICM for eight and a Spinal Crush. But, like, I don't care about the breakgrounds, the evergreens. You just munch those and then you just pressure back. You may not be dealing as much damage, but if they get greedy and take the damage, you can deal more damage than them. Um, and then you're just firing pressure back, trying to pull cards so that they can't hear power you. So you're kind of just hoping that you don't get hit by the Oakens, the Spinals, and the Cripplings. You're, you're happy to just yeah, take a, a break round or what was that one, Evergreen and a Hammer? You're happy to just take the 11 damage because it, it doesn't do anything to your game plan? Yeah, I'm happy to just munch those. And okay. then if you go, you go fast enough, you play aggressive enough, where you're, you're only seeing like the top quarter or third of your deck and you just gotta hope there's no few token olds in there yeah and then heading into the last round of swiss what did you play um i played the only other five of mr mr second place at the first new zealand nationals john harige oh the bro the what bro was, even yeah bro what, what was he, he was on? on he was on the old lexi oh okay switching things up which is one of, again, like my one of my favorite matchups. It can be can be a bit of an uphill struggle, or it's just a downhill slide for them. And I don't think I blocked a single time that game. Damn, just taking it all, just just uh, trading yeah. blows back and forth. Uh huh. He like three turns in a row. He like flipped a red ice encounter, played the red ice encounter, but. <laughs> Every time he did that, I had a belittle in hand. So it's just play the belittle, um, pitching my blue, the blue in my hand, search up a blue mineralism so, so that I can play my turn out. Play, yeah, you got to pay those ice taxes, eh? and the tutoring, yeah, the, the tutoring the mineralism felt, just helps. Yeah, the belittles feel so nice into Lexi because of those frostbite. You can just search up those blues to be able to play your turns out. Okay, and then uh, heading into top eight, you're six and zero with cut two, which is no easy, uh, no easy feat. But um, what what happened in top eight? Um, uh, I got the old the old undefeated curse. Got paired into Starvo. Um, he like turned to Starvo fused crippling. Like I took ten there, then he couldn't play the hammer out. But I just didn't have a turn because I had no cards. Um, nothing went well for that for me that game. I had I banished the wrong card off of an art of war. Oof. Um, I think heading into turn four, heading into turn five or six, he was on thirty eight and I was on nine. But I clawed clawed my way through it. I got him down to six before I died. Oh, uh, well, I think m maybe next time you um might try and concede round six, go get some lunch, <laughs> so you don't have the, the undefeated curse. Just, just that one loss, but... Yeah, I guess just, you... stay, just stay, concede so I stay undefeated. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think I think a lot of us have uh, had that same experience, myself included. Um, but, yeah, we, we ought to wrap things up here. Um, thanks again for coming on, joining, showing us um, a spicy katsu list. It's a bit of a, yeah, bro, a change yeah. from, um, you know, what other people have been saying a lot of, you know, the same Starvo a list over and I've over. Yeah. But, uh, oh, well, it was uh, nice having you on here, man. And um, hope nice to see you again soon. You, All right. Cheers, man. Yeah. Love right. bro. Peace.